Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. On today's episode, we're going to start our first kind of peek peek into the trade deadline. Um, look at some names you need to get to know uh, for the Sharks, who guys who might be on the move. And then we'll end today's episode with some Barracuda talk. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at Fear the Fin and San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch this on YouTube as well. And the Sharks played Friday night against the, uh, the Ducks. They won. There's really not much to take away from that game other than uh, Mac and Yemi looked really, really good. Um, but the Ducks are like one of the, are the worst team in the NHL right now. And it's hard to kind of draw a lot of stuff out of that game other than the sharks are just better than the ducks right now and makinemi will probably be getting more nhl starts later this season but let's get caught up on some news and notes um as we have practiced and some transactions and stuff and then we're going to start look at these sharks uh roster and which players could be potential free agent or potential guys to be moved at the trade deadline. Just kind of a nice little dip, dip our toes into the water of the trade deadline. Um, as again, the shark schedule kind of lightens up a little bit here. So they play the coyotes tom- on uh, Tuesday. So we'll have a preview for that, that game um, tomorrow. We're going to be doing a crossover with the fine folks over at locked on coyotes. And then they don't play until Saturday. So we got some time here to kind of dig into some other topics and con, you know, some, some other content here. So this week. So um, so let's start with, with a couple of news and notes and transaction stuff. So Couture did miss practice on Saturday, but or on Sunday, sorry, but he he took he blocked a shot um, in the ducks game in the ankle. It looked painful. Um, he didn't play much after, if at all, after the game um, or after the, that. But sounds like he should be trending to be okay to at least start practicing. Um, see, Monday's a big day if he gets a full day to practice, and I would assume he's probably going to be good to go on Tuesday against the, the Cody's. Um, if he misses, that would be big. I would wonder because, I mean, he's been a, a huge part of that second line kind of resurgence. Um, so, Interested to see what they do there. If they maybe dig down to like Bordalo could probably come in and play that second line role for them. Or if they want to, maybe they slide Benino there. We'll see what they do. Um, they did send a couple guys back down to the Barracuda. Um, CJ Seuss, um, Harrington, and then, or not Harrington, sorry, CJ Seuss, um, uh, Sveshnikov who cleared waivers, and then Nick Chichek were all sent to the Barracuda. They didn't play in Sunday's game. Um, and the Barracuda are going to be going on a road trip here. Uh, I think their two first start is with Henderson. So we'll see if any of those players stick around or if they're kind of just going to be floating around here right now as kind of backup guys for the Sharks. So uh, probably more of a kind of cost cutting, trying to save some of that cap space for the trade deadline um, to be able to fit in more contracts or fit in pieces like that. So we'll see what they do um, there with the one just something to keep an eye on um the coyotes did put uh not the coyotes sorry the natural predators uh did put someone on waivers today who could be very interesting and i'm um just just something to keep an eye on especially since the sharks have um their third in the waiver priority so between the ducks and the blackhawks are um uh, ahead of them but eli tolvanen of nashville who's really really good um i know he's had like kind of i i think he hasn't had the best kind of situation in nashville where he's been kind of bouncing around and stuff like that but just 
keep an eye on that. Um, if Mike Greer places a waiver claim for him, that would be really big. Um, he he would he's he's a dude. I think he's he's a legitimate dude. Former first round pick. So we'll see if if the Sharks claim him. We'll break it down uh, for you guys. Whatever if they do, um, but. Just keep an eye on, especially with the third third waiver uh, priority. So, um, James Jarmer looks like he's trending towards being ready. So again, we'll see if what the the Sharks do if they send uh, Makanemi back down to um, the Barracuda, especially on on Tuesday before the game. So if Makanemi heads back down, James Jarmer is probably going to be good to go. Sound like he's been getting full practices in, so it sounds like he's he's about ready to get going. Um, I think they'll send Makanemi down instead of waving Capo Kak. And, and um, we saw the Kings, of course, they waved, um, you know, uh, Cal Peterson. He cleared through waivers. Capo Kak, I don't know if he would clear through waivers, to be honest. I think somebody would potentially grab him. I know he's not had a good season uh, with the Sharks this year, but $2 million or $2.5 million for a goalie for the next two years. And we've seen him play really well before. So you wonder, I I don't think he would clear waivers is, is my thinking if they did waive him. So um, I would assume Etu Makanemi, or sorry, Etu, Etu, got to work on. Uh, that's how he likes to, his first name pronounced, but Etu Makanemi. Um, I think he would be, or sorry, Etto, Etto. Um, I think, I know he played really well against the Ducks, but um I don't think he's ready for kind of a full-time backup load, uh, load yet from, from the Sharks. Let him keep playing with the Cuda. The Cuda are, are off to a really good start this year. And I think let him keep playing with the Cuda right now. And he will get NHL games at, at the end of the year, especially once James Reimer is traded. Um, so, yes. Just keep him. Sharks will have some transactions here in the next couple of days. So before we continue, look into this trade deadline kind of what to expect some names that probably will be on the move. Um, I'll go through the entire roster guys who I think kind of look at who they're going to, who I think is going to be on the move. And then we'll dig into kind of the five guys who are realistically or not realistically uh, could be traded. So, but before we do that, do want to let you guys know about our friends over at uh, simply safe. Today's episode is brought to you guys by simply safe. If you haven't checked out Simply Safe yet, now's the time, especially with the holidays here. Holiday season, you see stuff, you know, stuff happening on the rise, like package theft, you know, home invasions, all that stuff right now. That's where you want to protect yourself, especially this time of the year with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering Lockdown Sharks listeners 40% off a new security system. But so don't put this off, okay? Great thing about them is their app, right? You're out Christmas shopping, you're at a Christmas party, holiday party, whatever, you're out at any time. You pull up the app, you could check the cameras, make sure everything looks good at home. It's great. And another great thing about them is their fast protect technology. In case of an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents are always keeping an eye. So that way they can capture critical evidence and use that to verify the threat is real. So you get the highest priority uh, police response. And, you know, if you're like out and like a raccoon goes through your backyard, they're not going to, you know, they know when a threat is real. So go check them out. You get the 24 seven professional monitoring service cost for under a dollar a day, less than half the price of traditional home security systems. And again, you don't want to miss out saving 40% off when you go to simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL today. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like simply safe. All right, let's look at the entire Sharks roster. Which guys, uh, potential trade candidates, which guys. So I'm going to go forwards and then on um, hurdle. He's not getting traded. He's the only safe guy. He has a full no movement cl- clause. He just signed it. Hurdle's not getting traded. Logan Couture. Um, if a team came calling, I think they would listen. But I mean, again, he has a three team no trade and he's the captain of the team. Um, I don't 
think I would be shocked if, if Logan Couture got traded. Um, Kevin LeBanc, two years left, 4.75. There was 7.25 million. Um, whispers of potentially trying to move him. He's had a pretty good uh, start to the season this year. Really has kind of found his home on that top line. Again, I don't think... I don't think he would be traded right now, especially with two years left on his deal with this year and next year left on his deal and a team trying to add kind of $5 million into their, their cap hit for the next, uh, next year. I don't think he's going to be traded. Uh, Luke Cunning, two years left at 2.75. Sharks just traded for him. I don't think they would trade him right now. Um, maybe next year. Yeah, I don't see it. Uh, right now again if a team came calling i'm sure my career but i just realistically there's a bajillion guys like luke luke, luke Cannon out there right now oscar Lindblom, um two years at two and a half million dollars he's not had the season that we expected don't see it alexander bear banoff um does have a 10 team no trade list two years at two and a half million dollars if a team came asking, I think I, the Sharks would definitely look into that. But um, I don't think they are going to be actively, you know, putting them out there on the roster. So if if somebody came asking for Bear Banoff, I'm sure my career would try to work something out. But um, I just I don't see him on the trade block right now, especially with how well he's been playing. And you know, we I talked about on Friday's episode. His numbers with him and Kotor. Um, Barabanov is a legit top six uh, forward, and he would be an amazing third line forward um, for for any playoff team. So, Nick Benito, I will hold on on that one. Sorry, uh, Nico Sturm, three years at two million dollars. Um, again, if a team asked, I'm sure Mike Greer would be uh, more than happy to talk, but. The he's had a great season, start to a season, but again, two more years at two million dollars, you can easily fit that in your your somebody's uh, cap. But I think teams are kind of more usually looking for the the year rental type of thing. So uh, Stephen Lorenz, uh, one sorry, two years at a little over a million dollars. Um, again, I don't think he's played fine on the fourth line, but I think uh, teams are probably looking elsewhere uh noah gregor does is on the last year of his uh deal with a little under a million dollars he hasn't really played much maybe he could be one of those guys who fresh start but again i i don't think his play is warranted enough for him to uh be a potential trade candidate uh jonah gadovich kind of the same thing kind of a, a tough guy um has played pretty Pretty decently, one year left on his uh, on seven hundred fifty thousand dollar deal, but again, I I don't see a, a like contending team uh, on the defense. Uh, Vlasic, no move clause, not getting traded. Redeem Shimmick has played better this year, but he's definitely not worth the the two million dollars. Um, so he has two years, two million dollars left on his contract. Uh, Matt Benning just signed a four-year, $1.25 million deal. He's not going anywhere. Jacob Megna, potentially. Um, two years at $762,000, so just a little bit over uh, Vet Min. Just turned 30. Sneaky old, uh, Jacob Megna. I didn't realize how old he was. But <clears throat> potentially, maybe. Again, you can find a bajillion kind of Jacob Megnas around. If a team came asking, though, I'm sure Mike Greer would be happy. Scott Harrington, one year, seven hundred fifty thousand. He was literally just on waivers, and nobody claimed him. So I don't see why a team would trade for him. Um, guys who are on IR, Mario Ferraro. Mario Ferraro's not going anywhere. <laughs> just signed a four-year deal at three point two five. Um, yeah, he's not going anywhere. And then the other two guys will will hang on there. Talk about in a minute. Capo Kakinen. Um, it would be weird if the Sharks traded him, uh, especially if they potentially trade James Reimer. Then you would have like uh, Etu McNamee and Aaron Dell as your goaltending tandem for uh, a good chunk. But I don't think Kapokakin and his, his play has not been warranted being worth a trade. And um, 
if he went on waivers, I think a team might take a, a, a stab at him, but um, I don't think somebody's going to be giving up a real asset for for him right now. So let's look at quickly at the guys um, who I kind of left off. So we'll start with Eric Carlson. Does four years left plus this year at eleven and a half million dollars full non movement clause. He's not getting traded. I just put him on here because, of course, all this smoke and, and stuff. But um, unless Eric Carlson says he wants to get traded, he's not going anywhere. Um, 30 games this year to 12 goals and 25 assists um, is at 53.62% Corsi four at five on five. Um, again, I know there's a lot of, oh, good Eric Carlson. I just don't see someone fitting, trying to fit in whatever percentage of Eric Carlson's cap for the next four years um, right now. It's yeah, his, his contract plus he has a full, no bond, new, a full, no movement clause. It's just, I just don't see it happening. So Nick Bonino, the sharks should get whatever they possibly can for Nick Bonino. Um, I would assume something kind of like what we saw last year from Andrew Cagliano, probably like a fifth round pick, in a couple of years, whatever you can get from Nick Benito. His one year, um, $2.05 million. The Sharks could um, keep a million, of, you know, eat a million of dollars of that if, if they wanted to trade him. Um, has a five year or five team no trade. So he does have a list of five teams. I'm sure, though, if one of the teams came calling in their potential, you know, cup, I'm sure Nick Benito would probably waive it. But you still have again. You have a ton of teams you could probably to potentially trade them to. So, um, twenty-seven games does have three goals. The goals are starting to come here now. Three assists. Uh, his Corsi four is at forty-two point zero eight percent, which is not that great. It's one of the lowest among the sharks. But you know he can play. I don't know if his center days are still here, but I think he's he's better suited as a winger. But you know, he's he's going to be solid on the PK. He's going to be a good guy in the locker room. I think he would be a fine addition to a team trying to bolster their third or fourth line on, on the full, you know, uh, situation. So probably looking at like a fifth round pick. Matt Nieto, one year, $850,000 left on his deal. Um, so the Sharks, they would could eat 425000 So whatever they quite it would be literally one of the lowest uh contracts you could add so easily fit into most teams cap situations he's 20 games six goals five assists 48.29 course c4 percent um we've seen his scoring touch this year um we know his penalty kill prowess i think matt nieto will definitely be on the way out um i think with his scoring touch especially what we've seen this year um playing with couture on that second line he's he's kind of taking the most of it um i think a reasonable asking price for matt nieto is a fourth round pick you know if you can get a fourth round pick from matt nieto probably feeling pretty good about it so the big one timo meyer again one year left on this six million dollar deal still an rfa um, I would assume whoever acquires him would probably try to work out a long-term deal with him. We will dig into a, Matt, a Timo Meyer potential trade more. I'm going to do a full episode looking at store like what I did last, like what we did last year with with Tomas Hurdle, looking at what you could get for him. But he would be you would be looking at first round pick plus assets for Timo Meyer. Um, 30 games this year, 14 goals, 13 assists, 54.74, Corsi 4%. Like Timo Meyer drives play, he scores, he does, he would be a first line forward on basically any team that acquired him. Um, if the Sharks wanted to eat $3 million of, they could, again, they can eat half of his contract. So, want to eat $3 million to send him off to, you know, whatever team. Um, again, Timo Meyer wheels. Dig into Timo Meyer more, but yes, I'm. I will, you know, plenty of time to talk about Timo Meyer. So, and then last but not least, uh, James Reimer, one year left on his 2.25 million, does have a five team no trade, uh, but I'm 100% positive that he would waive his no team, 
if it's especially if it's going to a contender. Um, 15 games this year, 903 save percentage. So the save percentage is down a little bit compared to, you know, numbers are down a little bit. I know he's been dealing with some injuries here and he's coming back from his injury right now. Uh, 3.00 goals against average. Uh, goals saved above expected. It is negative 1.2. But we have seen the Sharks defense this year. I think that asking price is a second. That I think that's what the Sharks asking price is, is a second round pick. Um, and there's plenty of teams that could use uh, some help in the goaltending department. I think James Reimer is 100% good as gone as long as he is healthy when we get to the trade deadline. But yeah, you're probably starting asking price is a second round pick. If you get maybe a third round pick and a prospect, um, I think you're, you're probably pretty happy with that. But yeah, James Reimer, he's probably, yeah. The Sharks should trade James Reimer because he's one of the good, at, one of the best assets that you can get uh, for a guy who's not part of your long-term plan. So, yes, as as well as James Reimer has been playing, he's also 34, and at some point, right, you can't keep asking James Reimer to to keep bailing you out. So, those are just kind of the five names to keep an eye on. Again, I don't think Eric Carlson's going anywhere, but. We'll dig into Timo Meyer a little bit more um, as we get uh, closer to the trade deadline. We'll do a full Timo Meyer special. What could they get? What teams make a lot of sense? All that fun stuff. So, but before we get into some Barracuda talk, uh, let's take a quick break. Talk to you guys about our friends over at Bet Online. Today's episode is brought to you guys by Bet Online, the number one source for your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You have the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. You got football, you have NCAA, or you've got college football, of course. You have bowl season here, basketball, you have pro, college, soccer, World Cup. You're down to the final four. Esports, they've got you covered over at betonline.net. And if you love a sports podcast, which you clearly do because you're listening to one right now, you can find those over at Bet Online as well. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fixed in. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Cuda talk. Um, so Cuda played Friday night. They got the doors blown out off. Uh, it was like eight to three against Coachella Valley. Um, looked like a team that had not played for a week, and that's how the first period was when they were down like five to one. But tonight's game though was um, much different, much better. They won three to one against the. Um, Bakersfield Condor, and we're continuing to see these young players um, taking bigger steps and bigger strides. We had Tristan Robbins with a goal, Scott Reedy with a goal, and William Eklund with a goal. Uh, Reedy and Eklund's were both on the power play. Let's start with the Barracuda power play, which um, had a very interesting... They went the five forwards. Uh, so you had Agazino, Reedy, Bortolo, Robbins, and Gushin all in the ice at the same time. And they got two goals out of it. Even when the Barracuda were up 2 nothing, kind of mid to late third period, still ran at that same power play one unit. So very interesting with John McCarthy kind of utilizing this power play of this five uh, forward power play. And I mean, the Sharks kind of do it. I mean, except for Eric Carlson is, is the fifth defense or the fifth forward and we you know eric carlson is an absolute wizard as a uh offensive defenseman but just really interesting that they've kind of gone with this especially with how beat up and how hurt defensively they are right you know chichek's been up with the bear or up with the sharks uh pulia has been out um kanizev has been out um Hadaka has been out. So it's basically been Merkley and Anyabuchi kind of having to, and then a bunch of kind of PTO guys, you know, so that's kind of been their defensive struggle. And you've seen that kind of really hurt with their transition game of getting hemmed in and pinned in with their own, their own defensive zone constantly. But back to the power play though, just letting those five guys, especially because, Bordelow, Eklund, and Gushin are all rookies. McCarthy kind of showing the trust in these guys that, you know what, I think, yeah, there might be a defensive miscue here, but 
I think my guys are just going to score. And they showed it tonight, right? We're having two goals, um, two power play goals tonight. So interesting to see, especially if, if he kind of continues that, especially as some guys start getting back, if, you know, start getting some more bodies in, in the, the defensive ranks. But just pretty, pretty awesome that they're willing to kind of try that down there. And again, giving Eklund, Bordolo, and Gushin the free reigns on and a five, yeah, five, the fab five forward group on the power play there. So, um, Eklund continues to do Eklund things. Um, had a really nice chance on, on a shorthanded wraparound attempt, um, tonight's almost this close to scoring there. So again, you getting that, uh, critical shorthanded time learning kind of that position. And now he's, he's kind of learning and now he's like, okay, let me take the next step. And try to instead of just being a penalty killer, can we make this try to get some offense here? Being smart about it, it was a good, you know, good, good play there, but kind of taking that next step with it, right? Um, and then with with some of the other guys, right? Daniel Gushin really started to come on recently, had another assist tonight, and you're seeing his confidence start to grow. And as he's he's starting to kind of figure out, okay, if if I'm not just if I'm not just scoring, what else am I, can I do to help the team? And you're really starting to kind of see that with him and his confidence is starting to grow and playing, you know, he's been playing top six minutes now with, with the Barracuda. Um, good development stuff. Right. And I know there's people question about John McCarthy, especially maybe some of the in-game stuff, but we know John McCarthy, he's good at developing players. And I think the in-game coaching decisions and some of that stuff will continue to kind of remember he's a first year coach, right? Some of that stuff will continue to, to to come with him, but you're seeing the development and how these players are adding skills to their tool set, you know, especially these young players, right? And you know, Bordolo and Robbins are kind of the same thing, right? Is is there, you know, Bordolo, he's been scoring a lot lately, which is good, but he's been adding, you know, as well, too. Like again, was he even was playing kind of the second unit, has worked his way up to the 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 power play on the top unit and he's playing the point up there, right? He's playing the kind of, you know, point guard of it, of making all the passes or making the right reads and then having to be defensively responsible, especially on this power play when you run five forwards and stuff's going to happen sometimes. And you need those forwards to kind of play strong defensive, uh, you know, that way you're not giving up shorthanded goals, but again, trusting these guys and giving them the, the kind of, okay, you've been learning let's add the next thing for you too so um really really encouraging to see they got a big road trip coming up here um they start in henderson who henderson's been kind of uh not super great um this year but let me pull up the eight let me pull up the standings right now so um kind of uh doo -doo -doo -doo. all right so kind of standings on the schedule so in the pacific division um barracuda are fifth out of ten it's kind of crazy how these are all kind of divided up but anyway uh fifth out of ten so they've got 27 points they're tied with coachella coachella just kind of blew the doors off him just also only played 19 games so um but 13 wins 10 losses one shootout loss for the barracuda and then um for their schedule so they have a uh if I was better prepared. All right. So, yeah, they're heading out on the road here. So, they got Henderson, who I think they should be able to beat. Then this weekend, they have two games in Colorado on Friday and Saturday. And then in Abbotsford next week before they head back home to play the Condors and Coachella Valley um, to end the year here. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think, though, for them, they should be able to beat Henderson. And then I think if you split the two games against Colorado and you split the two games against Abbotsford, you're probably going to feel pretty good about yourself. So that's some Barracuda talk. All right. Um, that's going to do it for me today. Um, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at my Fryhole. Um, you can follow the show, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. You can listen wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, all of those places. Watch on YouTube. 
And then until tomorrow, so we have a nice preview with the uh, Locked On Coyotes. So we'll probably talk about the game, talk about tanking, um, all that fun stuff. So until tomorrow, bye, friends.